What's going on, boys and girls? What's up, world? Austin John plays here, and welcome back to Link's Awakening. Uh, golly, I really have to come up with a name because the last one was a perfect start, and this is like a hundred percent perfect playthrough. I don't know. Maybe by the end of the episode, I'll come up with the the catchy name that we want. Anyways, so in our last episode, we achieved the following items. Five pieces of heart, four secret seashells, and getting our first fairy bottle as well as completing all of the trade secrets up until this point. If you did not do these things, I highly recommend going back and checking the previous episode. It's going to be linked in the description down below as well as probably the end screen and the top right corner. Fantastic, with no further ado, let's head inside of our first temple. And this is going to be the Tail Cave. It's a cave for tail, sweet. Right from the start, head to the left. These guys, you can either block them with your shield and move them back slightly, or hit them with your sword and they go back much further. Our first key is going to drop right here on top of this platform. Progress one more room to the left. There's going to be a couple of little slimy boys that pop up, and we're going to get ourselves another item. This is going to be the compass. Now, the compass actually functions different in this game than it does the other games. Of course, on the map screen, we see all of the treasure chests. We also see the nightmare room. That's the boss of every single dungeon or shrine. Damn it, not a shrine, just dungeons. Sorry, sorry, shrine hunters is on the mind. And you'll see the compass over there on the right hand side. What's unique though is if you enter an area, you'll hear a notification as well as see a visual icon on the right side of the screen. Let's backtrack to the main room and head north. That's the sound that it makes. Let's knock that guy off, jump on here. Well, not jump, walk. Link can't jump, that's so silly of me to say. And we got ourselves our second key. If you look back on the map screen where there was a chest that was bright and complete, now it has a black top and it's dulled out. Let's head to the left one room. And in here we just need to kill these four keys. Those are the names of the bats. That unlocks the room. Let's head one room north. Right here you're going to notice a wall with a unique texture on it. Now this is a bombable wall. It's also audible, so if you were to hold down your sword attack and then stab the wall, your hat sounds much different. We know that there's something suspicious going on there. So I'm actually gonna put down a circle icon. That means that I need to come back here once I have bombs. And we're gonna head to the north, use our key on this door right here. It's also worth mentioning that I am going to explain things about the dungeon, but I am going to be showing you pretty much the most effective way to go through. As long as I know it, I mean, toward the end of the game, the dungeons get a little, a little difficult, a little tricky. Right here is an owl statue, and inside of a dungeon, you're going to, alongside the map and the compass, you're going to get the owl's beak, which is made of stone, and then you're gonna be able to speak to the owls and they tell you secrets and hints on how to progress through. And this one is tell you, this one's gonna tell you to push that there. Great. Inside of here, we're gonna hit these spinies and you can either hit them to death or knock them into the hole. This is gonna give us a staircase. Sweet, dude. This is our first 2D section and you're gonna notice that these are Goombas down here. You can either set them on fire with your magic powder, which is a real reckless use of that. I'm actually gonna unequip that for right now. You can attack them with your sword, or you can take care of them the old fashioned way by hopping on them. And if you hop on them, they always drop a heart, which is really neat, you know, cause that's what Mario would do. Next, we're gonna head north. You're gonna see this floating icon here of three hearts. That means that if we had a way to jump up and collect that, we get three hearts but we don't have a way to jump up and collect that. So let's just keep heading north, open up this chest. And whoa, we got the rock's feather, which allows us to jump up. Sweet, dude. Look at that, Link can jump. Why were people so, so amazed when he was able to jump in Breath of the Wild? He could jump in this game too. You could also jump in the 2D sections and 
either in the 2D sections or in the overworld, if you jump and then do a sword attack, you do a jump attack. You can also look down and jump, which is pretty neat, or look up and jump. Also in these 2D sections, you can attack down and you can attack up. Good things to know for the future. Nice, now we're going to backtrack and we can hop over this chasm that stopped us from doing that before. Also, a nice thing to mention is this is a part wall. What's unique about it is, well, obviously you can see over it, but you could also throw items over that. So if you had an item like a pot or something else, you could throw it on top of that. Also, you can walk there. So say for example, where these bricks are, if that was a solid wall, Link would be able to travel in this half wall area. That's actually a very important thing to know for the future. However, you cannot attack enemies through this wall. Next, we're gonna head down and to the right. We get a notification about the compass, tells us that something is going on here. Take care of this guy by swiping at him. Now, these electric enemies are gonna be a pain in the butt most of the game until the very end of the game where you actually obtain the item that you're gonna be able to use to defeat them. We get a small key, which is sweet. However, we're not actually done right here. Let's just run over here and take care of this guy. And that's going to spawn a chest right in between the two. And we get a red rupee, nice. From here, we are going to head above these blocks. Ignore that guy for now, hop over, use our key on that block that was blocking our way, because that's what blocks do. Our compass is going to activate, letting us know that we found a treasure chest and the boss key, called the Nightmare Key. With the Nightmare Key, we can make our way directly to the boss. I'm going to always make sure that I get every chest possible before going to the Nightmare Room, because there's always great things and we might miss them. Plus, it's 100% playthrough, right? Head inside, head north. And here is a fun little puzzle room. I don't remember the name of these guys, and the puzzle should be pretty obvious. You need to hit one, hit another, and hit another. However, their icon, which is from a deck of cards, needs to always match. And what icon it stops on actually impacts their drop. But just take your time, no reason to run. If you rush, you're probably gonna mess up. But if you stop on a heart, then they all drop hearts, which is neat. And inside of here, we get ourselves the Owl Beak, called the Stone Beak. Now you can walk up to any owl statue in this dungeon alone, and it tells us little secrets, like turn aside the spined ones with a shield. That was in this room over here that we already did, right there. Now we still need to get the dungeon map, and there's one chest down here besides that bombable one, so that's most likely the item we're gonna get next. Hop over to the right. Here's our first mini boss of the game. And he's very simple, but it's important to time jumping over that well. Also, it does ricochet off of the back wall, so be mindful of that. Also in this game, you can really just spam the sword button in front of an enemy and deal a fair amount of damage really quickly. Mini bosses usually drop fairies. I'm gonna put one in my bottle. Again, if you do not have a bottle, you should be checking out the first episode of this Let's Play series called The Perfect Start. And they also have this portal that opens up. Now this portal will automatically bring Link back to your entrance room, which is really neat if you ever need to leave early, if you need additional items and supplies, things like that. However, if you have enough supplies, you generally never need to use this portal. It's good for backtracking, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna be covering pretty much everything. And as soon as I say that, I contradict myself by, if I head north, that brings me to the nightmare room, but I forgot this chest right here, so I'm actually gonna backtrack on that portal. You have to stand directly in the middle. It's a little finicky. We're gonna head north. Jump to the right. Defeat all the enemies in the room. And a chest drops that has the dungeon map. I mean, you don't really need the dungeon map if you're following this guide, right? Right? Right. Now we could either fast travel back or we could just walk there because we're not that far away. 
Now is also a great time to mention something different. So I'm gonna save my game right here and I'm going to on purpose take damage and die. And you're gonna see that I have that fairy in my inventory and even if I equip the fairy, what's unique about the fairies in this game is they don't revive you at all. You get a game over. There is a different item in the game that allows you to be revived if you do get knocked out. However, we don't have access to that item yet. The reason I saved before I did that is because I want zero deaths. In the original game, if you made your way all the way to the end and you did not die, then you got yourself a secret ending. And I don't know if that's in this game. In my other playthrough, I'm, I'm still playing through flawlessly to see if that is a, f uh, a feature in the game. Anyways, here we come to the room right before the nightmare lair. And if we head down the stairs, there's three hearts that we can get, which is going to be a little helpful since we did take some damage. But completely optional. You do not have to get it. Does not count toward 100%ing in my book because it respawns. Great. Now let's head north into our first boss battle. Buzz buzz, outsider. Okay. This is Moldorm. And he has a weak spot on his tail. As soon as you hit that weak spot, he starts to go crazy and attacks. I recommend being shielded and do not let him push you off because if he pushes you off, which I may cut to footage of that, or he's gonna push me off right here. Then we head down to right where those hearts were previously located. And you have to start the battle all over again. I'm gonna attack him. Dodge him. Oh, we could also jump. I keep forgetting that. Attack him. Just avoid where he's going all crazy and stuff. And after the third hit, his tail will still be exposed and he'll be a bright red color. And then there is no cooldown for his tail. You just need to run in and attack it. And fantastic, defeating the nightmare spawns a full heart container in the middle of the room. We can collect that, which brings us up to five hearts. Sweet dude. There is an auto save. And also the last room is open right here to the north. This is going to be our cello. Full moon cello? Yes, full moon cello. We also get the cello only part of the Ballad of the Windfish and it's beautiful. Our screen turns white and it says swamp. A path opens in the blooms. Well, fantastic. That's going to be the first dungeon here for Link's Awakening, which we do need to revisit once we get bombs. That's the reason that we put that on the map. And on the overworld, it does not create an icon. If we head back in there, you'll see that we still have our one icon still in place. So I'm gonna make myself an icon in the overworld. Now we have ourselves the full moon cello, five pieces of heart and four secret seashells. We just got ourselves the rock's feather or rook's feather. I've heard it being pronounced both ways. And that's going to take us into our next adventure. Later today, I'm gonna to be helping you guys out with all the collectibles that we get for the next area and then making our way to the thwomp, the swamp, just in case that wasn't clear. Well, fantastic. I'm wrapping this up, guys. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Be sure to drop a like down below. Until next time, Austin John out.